Today we're going to do something a little different. If you need a pick me up, we've got it for you. Absolutely. Because we're going to read through nine verses here, and we're going to talk about it scripture by scripture. And every one of these are so encouraging to our lives that you need to hear them. Absolutely. It might even be something you want to write down and post in your house. Okay, so hi, I'm Shauna, and this is Pete with Golly Hugh Family Discipleship. We're ordained ministers with the Church of God, and we love to study the Word. Not only that, but we love to share it with others. So that's what we're doing. We're coming into your home through social media and say, let's study the Bible. Uh, today we're going to be finishing up Romans chapter 8, and that is nine scriptures, uh, 31 through 39. And like <coughs> Pete mentioned, we're going to go scripture by scripture. We're just going to read the scripture, and we'll, we'll discuss it just a little bit. And... Um, it pretty much speaks for itself. It's powerful, it's encouraging, and it's what we need to hear today. So it says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Bam. First okay. verse, right? Yeah. And you look at that and you think about it, and it's true. I mean, if the all-power, all-knowing all uh, is on your side, and you know that he has victory, and there's not, not, no enemy that can overcome him, why should we worry about things, right? Yep. If God is forced, who can be against us? It don't matter who's on the other side. If God's right. on your side, you've got victory. You know, if we just come off of Romans eight twenty eight, and we talked about that all things work together for the good to those mm -hmm. that are called according to his purpose. You know, he loves us. And, uh, hey, who, if he's for us, who can be against us? Uh, verse 32 says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also allow with him graciously give us all things? He's supplying our needs. Man, if, he, if you're willing to allow your child to die for me, yeah. you're going to give me everything else you got too, right? Because you've already laid down the most important thing, and that's a life. Yep. So uh, it's a pretty awesome scripture. It, it we goes, talked about yeah. earlier this week, you know, hey, you know, God says, I'm making the sacrifice because I want you. And you can have everything I have. I don't need it. I have you. That's what I right. want. Verse 33 says, Who will bring any charge against those uh, whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Then, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus died more than that who was raised to life, is at his right hand of God and also intercedes on our behalf. So what it's saying is, who can condemn you? Mm -hmm. Who can point the finger, right? Because it said that Jesus died and paid the price for you. And no one can make a charge against you. No right? one You're has God's, the authority right? to take you out and take justice out on mm -hmm. you. Because God has uh, paid the price and he has justified you through Jesus Christ. So uh, 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And then 36 says, As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep um, to be slaughtered. Sorry. Right. So <laughs> but like a sheep led to slaughter. Right? Yeah, yeah. But what, it, what it's saying there is... Uh, you know what? There, there is no one that has this power or authority over you, mm -hmm. right? No one can do that or, or, or keep you from doing what God wants you to do. He has all power. He has all authority. And nothing or no hardship or no persecution can separate you from God. Right. Nothing that happens in this life is ever going to separate you from God. Right. In fact, those things should push you closer to God. Right, you know, um, God is encouraging us that nothing can come between us. That that we nothing will ever be allowed to come between us. You know, it's always going to be uh, dependent on our decision because God's given us free will. You know, we lay our lives down for Christ daily, every day, and nothing, nothing can compare to um, the price that He's paid, and nothing can compare to the relationship that we build with Him. And it goes on in thirty. Seven it says, No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's right. We are conquerors. We're the victory, right? That's We're right. the victorious. We've talked about that for a couple chapters that God has made us victorious over everything that we could ever face because of Christ's sacrifice and because of our um, devotion to him. And the last two verses kind of <laughs> closes out with a uh, I guess a punctuation that, that there's nothing that can separate us from God's love. 
It says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor future, or any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. That's that's so powerful. Um, you know, there are so many things that can separate us from people that we love here on earth. There really are, you know, um, <clears throat> and, and not because we choose, but because they may choose to walk away from us. We have the guarantee, the seal that says God will not walk away from us. You know, God will not, uh, his love will not be separated. Nothing could separate God's love from us. And you know, the, the thing about that, that's just an eternal love. Mm-hmm. We're going to spend eternity with him, not Absolutely. just this life. When we die and go to the grave here, uh, that's not the end of our relationship with God. That love is going to carry us through eternity and on and on and on. And look, these these nine verses that we just read, take time to concentrate upon them as a family. Read these verses out loud. Uh, this wouldn't be something hard to, or, or bad to do on a daily basis. These are very good scripture that are encouraging, that will empower you that will help you grow in your relationship in Jesus Christ because every one of them says we can trust in him. That's right. And he is going to take care of us. Yeah. We don't have to fear. We don't have to uh, be hesitant. When we wake up in the morning, we know God's got it. Yeah. He's got our back and yeah. he's in control. We can truly hope in him in mm-hmm. all things. Uh, we want to encourage you to be intentional with your walk with Christ and know that he does love you unconditionally, that he has your back, that he, he goes before you, that he's your rear guard, that he watches over his word to perform it, that you know his word is yes and amen. Uh, be confident in that. Be confident that he loves you and he doesn't want to be separated from you ever again. Uh, but we want to encourage you that every day you'll encounter God, exalt him, you're going to edify yourself through reading of the word, and you're going to engage the world for Christ. Tell everybody else about this freedom that you have found, about this hope and this love that you have found, and it is eternal. Until next time, God bless. God bless.